The State Department added it was also concerned about financial debts at UNESCO and said the organization needed fundamental reform. In 2011, the U.S. stopped contributing to UNESCO's budget in protest at its decision to grant Palestine full membership. However, Washington says it would like to remain as a non-member observer. Well, let's speak to William Denslow, who joins me now from New York. Uh, William, this seems to be a bit of a surprise. What prompted this? Well, essentially, according to U.S. officials, this has been in the works for months, and U.S. Ambassador to the, Uni to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, has repeatedly expressed her, her anger at UNESCO in the past. Of course, this isn't the first time the United States has made this decision. Under Ronald Reagan, they made a similar move, citing UNESCO as having a pro-Soviet bias. And now, of course, as you mentioned, the U.S. are complaining, stating that UNESCO is showing an anti-Israeli bias. Of course, you mentioned uh, that case of, um, of, the, of Palestine being granted full member status. That saw an end to its budget cuts for the U.S. back in 2011. It was also the case of Hebron being uh, noted as a Palestinian world heritage site. That incredibly angered the United States. So we have heard from, uh, speaking to a few UN watchers, they say that this was in many ways a logical move by the United States, describing UNESCO as somewhat of a whipping boy for the United States. Mm. Has UNESCO said anything and what impact could this have on the UN agency? Yeah, we have heard from UNESCO. We've heard from their Director General, Irina Bokova, who says this is a deep regret and not only a loss for the agency, but a loss for the United States themselves. Now, in terms of the impact this could have going forward, well, of course, the U.S. has already withdrawn funding a few years ago. Uh, but the real question is, will other, ma other nations come in to fill the void? Speaking to some U.N. watchers, they say other member states, such as China, could come in and fill that gap. So very interesting to see what happens there. There's also the key issue of who takes over from Irina Bokova, who's set to step down soon, of course. We've got the likes of uh, Qatar, Egypt and France all in the running. So very significant when it comes to what the future director general will mean when it comes to their policies when it comes to Palestine and Israel. But, of course, the real question is, this is obviously a massively significant event. Of course, World Heritage sites known across the world. So the loss of a member state with the notoriety and the potential financial backing that the U.S. could provide, incredibly significant.